can we go into that in a bit more detail? Sure. I'd love to learn a little bit more about that because that you know, if um, the people that are going to listen to this podcast are going to be brewers, and I'd love to, okay. um, you know, dig into the economic impacts of of the supply chain issues. Okay. Well, without going too far back, um, I know we were talking about crypto before, but um, basically we've never seen a global fiscal stimulus like we have over the last couple of years. So all around the world, all the federal treasurers have printed money effectively, so pushed more money into the money supply. And our beautiful government has done it again, um, despite the fact inflation's at, 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 um, starting to pick up. So what that, and that coupled with the fact our service economy was taken away overnight, travel, restaurants, bars, cafes, etc., just caused a massive demand spike. And then... Um, the world's factory, China, has gone through some massive stresses in the last sort of 12 months. So they had energy shortages before the Beijing Olympics. They wanted the air clean and all that sort of thing. So they um, told a lot of factories and shut a lot of factories and they're playing geopolitics with coal and that. So the manufacturing side of China slowed down. And then the other thing that happened was globally, um, we had COVID outbreaks at ports and uh, we had skeleton crews in factories. Um, and effectively what we've seen is um, everyone buying more stuff, like not just a little bit more stuff. I think New South Wales bought like, it was phenomenal. It was like six times more home furnishings in, in 2021 than the previous year and stuff like that. So people have just ramped up demand and then the system has broken. And like I've been talking to brewers about it and it's open public knowledge, but we import malt from England and we've imported multiple containers the shipping was roughly speaking pretty standard, six to eight weeks. Um, the price was pretty standard. Um, we could budget that. We could get the mold in quickly, get the, get it through to our customers. And then the last container we landed just after Christmas took twice as long and cost 60% more in terms of freight. And then when we sold a lot of that stock because everyone was running out of stock, um, we went to our freight forwarders and said, we're going to need to import another container. And they said, oh, here's the bad news. The shipping price has gone up another 60%. And you're like, really? And it, it was pushing the price of just the transport cost of the malt pretty much to where we could buy um, a sack of domestic malt from our partners at Malt Europe. And so I was sort of saying, well, I can't look at my customers in the face and say, I'm going to double your malt price. And, and I was talking to a small brewer today who said he hasn't put a price rise through to um, you know, his customers for six years, but they're all getting hit. We're all getting hit with price rises. So we've sort of created a bit of a monster and the forecasts on the shipping side of things from the global shipping experts is that that monster won't start to die down until about middle of next year. So uh, people are making decisions, uh, buying less stuff and um, people will get back on planes and go for holidays to to, to see their loved ones and go to beautiful resorts and things. People are going back out to restaurants and bars. So we'd like to think that just the volume of general merchandise shipping around the world will drop. And also we'd like to think that the ports will get on top of the congestion. But at the moment, it's really, really bad. And it's really bad in the United States. It's also quite bad uh, um, in China and they shut down Shanghai now for COVID. And also it's bad at Singapore. So... Yeah, system that worked beautifully for you know the last twenty years. Unfortunately, is quite broken and will be for about eighteen months. So, we're working really hard with all our suppliers to look for local substitute products, um, and for those essential products, we're just asking everyone to plan for um, much longer lead times. You know, we can't take it for granted. And even when I was shopping online yesterday at Coles or Woolworths, there's a lot of out of stocks. And I thought if those guys can't bring in. Um, you know, frozen fruit or whatever it is that they're stocking in their freezers. Um, uh, you know, it's really difficult for small businesses to secure raw materials. So we're just sort of encouraging people to be creative, buy local. Back to the whole thing we we're talking about. For uh, sure. Yeah. The, the um, it's clear that vax mandates being across the globe destroyed the destroy the labour force for a. It might be a 10, 12, 14 week period there. And we know that put everything a long way behind. Yeah. It was probably a long way behind well prior to that, but yeah. that certainly didn't help. Yeah. And then you've got the addition of, you know, 7% inflation in the US. The UK is now up to 6.3% inflation annualized. Yes. So, you know, and the UK is it's growing. And the whole Russia thing is 
is actually having all the sanctions are having a little bit of the opposite effect to what they thought that they would have. And um, they seem to be hurting the West a lot more than they're hurting Russia. So it's, um, it's going to be really interesting times over the next, you know, the next six months are going to be weird, but I think longer term, it's going to be really weird.